Tonight, Canada's latest round of Iran sanctions includes two entities and eight individuals involved in production of ballistic missiles and drones. According to Canada, these drones are being supplied to Russia, a claim denied by Tehran. And Canada's treatment of its Indigenous peoples is a national disgrace, says an Amnesty International report. The report highlights violations of basic rights, including access to clean water. We cover stories about a Wall Street journalist being arrested in Russia, a podcast exploring the implications of Canada's anti-terrorism laws, and a heartwarming response of Morocco's football coach to racism. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I am Catherine Bullock. The Canadian government is targeting two new Iranian entities and eight Iranian individuals in its latest round of sanctions. The announcement was made this Monday. The sanctions are for production of drones and ballistic missiles and violations of human rights. Canada last sanctioned senior officials from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and law enforcement forces in October for what it calls gross and systematic human rights violations in Tehran and northwestern Iran. This is the 10th time Canada is sanctioning Iranian nationals and corporations. In a statement, Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie said the Iranian regime should stop the brutal oppression of Iran's people and address their demands in good faith. Tensions between Iran and the West have been running high since Iran's clampdown on anti-government protests. Recently, Tehran's nuclear activity and its supply of drones for Russia's war in Ukraine has also raised alarm in the West. Tehran says it is not selling drones to Moscow for the Ukraine war. FIFA has officially revoked the hosting status of Indonesia to hold the upcoming Under-20 World Cup 2023. The news comes after Bali, a largely Hindu island, said it would not host the Israeli team. Indonesia has the world's largest Muslim population. It does not have diplomatic ties with Israel and supports the Palestinian cause. In a statement, FIFA says it has decided to remove Indonesia as the host and a new host will be announced soon. It also said the dates of the tournament remain unchanged and possible sanctions against the Football Association of Indonesia may be decided later. Earlier this month, Indonesians stormed the streets with Indonesian and Palestinian flags, insisting Israel not to be allowed to compete in the tournament. EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen has urged the bloc to rebalance its relationship with China. Speaking at a joint event of the Mercator Institute for China Studies and the European Policy Centre, von der Leyen says the EU's current relationship with China is, quote, unbalanced. She said China is aiming to make itself less dependent on the world and the world more dependent on China, especially in cutting edge technology. Von der Leyen said China is more repressive at home and more assertive abroad. She referred to human rights violations against Muslim minorities in China's Xinjiang province and escalatory actions towards EU societies. Von der Leyen said the EU should not cut economic, societal, political and scientific ties. Instead, it should aim for fairer and more disciplined competition in trade. She also called on drawing a clear line in investment and trade when dual purpose use cannot be excluded or human rights might be implicated. Canada's treatment of its Indigenous people is a national disgrace, says Amnesty International. In an annual report, the Human Rights Organization says Canada has failed to uphold the rights of Indigenous peoples and respect their lands and resources. The report cites various failures to obtain Indigenous consent to use their land, despite promises to address injustices. It gives an example of drilling for gas on Wet'suwet'en land in British Columbia without the approval of the tribe's hereditary chiefs. Later, Canada compounded the offence by laying criminal contempt charges against 19 Indigenous protesters. The report points out other forms of systemic discrimination and violation of basic rights, including access to clean water, education and health care. 
According to the report, there are 33 long-term do not drink the water advisories in 29 Indigenous communities. The report demanded immediate and specific action to remedy the situations. The report was also critical of the appalling legacy of Indian residential schools, which 150,000 Indigenous children were forced to attend beginning in the 1820s. The goal was to stamp out Indigenous culture, and it led to the deaths of an estimated 4,500 children through abuse and malnutrition. Two US Army Black Hawk helicopters crashed in Kentucky during a training mission, killing nine soldiers, according to a military spokesman of the 101st Airborne Division. The crash occurred at 10 p.m. last night in a county in Kentucky, northwest of Fort Campbell. According to the statement issued by the base, the crew members were flying two Black Hawk helicopters during a routine training mission when the incident occurred. The base says the incident is under investigation. Kentucky's governor tweeted that he will travel to Fort Campbell to support the troops and their families after last night's tragic incident. Fort Campbell is home to the 101st Airborne Division, the US Army's only air assault division. Nicknamed the Screaming Eagles, the division was activated in August 1942 and gained renown during World War II. More recently, the division has seen action in Iraq and Afghanistan. An American journalist has been detained on suspicion of spying for Washington, says the Kremlin. The news has drawn condemnation from the West and calls for the Wall Street journalist reporter's release. Evan Ger Gershkovich, who is 31 years old, is believed to be the first foreign journalist to be detained on suspicion of spying in post-Soviet Russia, charges that carry a maximum penalty of 20 years behind bars. His arrest is being viewed as a serious escalation in the Kremlin's sweeping crackdown on the media. The Wall Street Journal said it was deeply concerned for Gershkovich's safety. It vehemently denies the claim from the Russian Federal Security Service that he was spying in the interests of the American government. International media watchdog Reporters Without Borders said it was alarmed by what looked like retaliation. The watchdog says Gershkovich was investigating the military company Wagner. Wagner is a mercenary group playing a prominent role in Russia's military campaign in Ukraine. According to Russia's federal security, the journalist de was detained while attempting to obtain classified information on Russia's military. The journalist is detained in Moscow until May 29, pending trial. Qatar's state oil company has invested in stakes in a pair of East Coast exploration blocks off the coast of St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. According to a statement by Qatar Energy, it will invest in ExxonMobil Canada. Saad al Kabi, CEO of Qatar Energy and the Minister for Energy Affairs, in a statement says they are pleased to sign the agreement. al Kabi says in the statement the investment is part of its international growth drive. He says the company looks forward to, continue working, to continuing working in Canada's transparent and stable market. Qatar is the world's largest producer of liquefied natural gas. In recent years, Qatar Energy has signed deals with major Western oil companies, including Shell and Total Energies. It has also allowed foreign investments in its gas fields. Recently, Newfoundland's oil drilling has fallen off. It is expected to pick up later in the year after the province's approval of the $16 billion Bay du Nord project. The National Council of Canadian Muslims, also known as NCCM, is launching a podcast series later this week. The podcast, named Concealed, will explore the topics of national security, terrorism, mental health and family through the troubling case of Abdurrahman al Bansawi, a young Canadian man who is serving 40 years in prison in the US for allegedly plotting terrorism. NCCM members Stephen Zhao and Samiha Amira will host the pod podcast. Jail told Muslim News Canada the podcast aims to bring to light the ethical implications of anti-terrorism practices, which disproportionately affect the Muslim community. The Vatican, according to a Vatican news tweet, has rescinded the infamous Doctrine of Discovery, a long-demanded action by Canada's Indigenous peoples. 
The doctrine known as a papal bull that dates to the 15th century was used to excuse, excuse the oppression of indigenous people working worldwide during European colonialism, says a document published in the official Vatican News. According to the Vatican, the document is not a part of the teaching of the Catholic Church. It went on to say the rescinding of the doctrine was spurred in part by Canada's Indigenous peoples' demand during Pope Francis's penitential journey to Canada eight months ago. Beginning in the mid-1800s, Indigenous children were forced from their homes into schools where the goal was to crush their heritage and replace it with white culture. The doctrine adversely affected more than just England and France's colonisation of Canada's Indigenous peoples. It also allowed the Portuguese and Spanish kingdoms to take land from territories in Africa and South America under the guise of spreading Christianity. Prior to the Canadian visit, Pope Francis had apologised in 2015 to the native people of Bolivia for colonial conquests. A waiter at a Madrid hotel restaurant in Spain has been arrested for an alleged hate crime for posting derogatory remarks about Islam and the Moroccan football players who were staying at the hotel. The 27-year-old waiter at Eurostar's hotel tower requested photographs from the players. He uploaded them on social media with xenophobic insults, tagging the Moroccan team's account. The post quickly gathered more than 70,000 views. Otusa, the group owning the hotel, issued an apology, saying the comments were reprehensible and unacceptable. The group noted that the waiter was an external worker hired on an occasional basis. Moroccan coach Walid Regragi said in response, the racism is unacceptable, but Islam is a religion of tolerance. Regragi said, quote, we forgive this person in accordance with the requirements of the Islamic religion and the customs of the Moroccan people. He invited the waiter to visit Morocco so that he can witness the atmosphere in Ramadan. Morocco's football team grabbed international attention when it became the first Arab team to reach the FIFA World Cup quarterfinals last year. Last weekend, the team beat five times world champion Brazil 2 to 1. Thank you for watching. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or go to our website, muslimnetwork.tv, to make a donation so that we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.